Hey everybody, it's Brooks with DataMine, and today we have a special guest, Teresa Cox. Uh, a lot of our users have been asking us to do, how do I know when to use DataMine? Weekly, monthly, daily, and I thought, who not better to ask than Teresa Cox herself? A lot of uh, the features that are built into the program actually came directly from her. She loves analytics probably more than any of our users all combined. So I really thought that it would be a neat to be able to go over these kind of stats with all of our user base and we'll post the video to YouTube. So Teresa, just go ahead and say hi, introduce yourself to all the new people out there. Hey everyone. Um, yeah, as Brooke said, I've uh, been uh, full on board with DataMine and helping them develop something that they already had going. I just um, recommend some uh, tweaks and some additions and some information that frankly I you know we can't get from eBay that I think would be helpful and they come they've come through and a lot of times in in a 24 hours sometimes it's a week um, sometimes you know it just rolled it's rolled out into the package um, you know whenever they have a, another update so I'm very pleased with data mine and and I know that people have questions so I'm glad that we're doing this yep and we're going to try to make this to be like a 15 minute video and at the end of the video I want to give some special stuff that's coming down in our next release. So we're going out to LA next week for the LA meetup there and we're going to announce some pretty cool data that's going to help you save money. So I want to talk about that uh, briefly and then how that's going to build over the course of two to three months, maybe even longer. But with that said, I'm just going to share my screen real quick and start going over how to use data mine on a routine basis. So, all right. Can you see my screen, Teresa? Yep, there you go. All right, so we're gonna break this down into four categories. Monthly, weekly, daily, on demand. On demand is just, you just, your, your head's on fire, you need to look up some data, when do I need to do it? So I'm gonna start out with monthly. Monthly is with your accounting. So cost of goods, expenses, revenue. Let me just go over that. For the people that use DataMine for their accounting or if you're not sure how to use the accounting features, I tell people in a very simple way, if you want to use DataMine for your accounting, this might sound silly to some of people out there, but just have three shoe boxes in your house. Label one of them, cost of goods. Label the second one, expenses. Label the third one, uh, revenue. You don't really need a bucket for because you sell online, unless you sell locally where you take cash from. And then every time that you go to a thrift store or you buy something for your business, drop the receipt in the appropriate shoebox. This might sound very elementary, but it's very simple and it works. At the end of every single month, or the beginning of the next month, you need to reconcile your expenses and cost of goods. So I would add all those up and then I would go into data mine and I would go into your accounting area. Let me just move the screen up real quick go into your accounting, and I would do a lump sum transaction for everything that happens. So your cost of goods, your source could be miscellaneous, because it's gonna be multiple places potentially. And I would call this right here, April cost of goods reconcile. This is a very uh, macro way of doing things from an accounting standpoint, but it will suffice for your CPA. And then you just need to add up all those receipts, and let's say it's 500 bucks, and you would click on save. That then would post our general entry to your summary tab. So it, it hits, you know, April's book of business, that cost of goods for the 500 bucks. You would do the same thing for expenses. You can get as granular if, if you want. So let's say you went to five different places that you bought things from. You could go into data mine and do individual transactions saying this goodwill added up to be 100, this one 200. You can do it that way if you wanted to see where you're spending your money. Um, and then the, for the expenses, be the same way. Go through your expenses, categorize them, whether it be for office supplies, materials, and then enter those appropriately in your transactions tab here. So an example of that would be expense. It could be, um, I'm just trying to find a good one. Utilities is a great one that I post every single month. So this right here, we use something called SCNG. And then that might be, you know, 115 bucks for our office. And then click save. So Teresa, from you have way more accounting experience than I do. Is that too simple? Or is that something that 
What do you accept? What do you think? No, I think it's, I think it's um, great. And I think you, like you said, you can do it as detailed or as, um, you know, you can get down into the weeds or you can do it at the 30,000 foot level. Um, I frankly, because I do Quicken and I put all these kind of expenses in my Quicken account, I primarily use data mine for tracking my cost of goods, pulling in my um, uh, shipping costs, just so I can see what my net profit is for eBay. Um, but if you don't, or if you do have, uh, you can use them together. If you do use Quicken or you, and you have a uh, data mine, a lot of times while I'm entering stuff, I remember, oh yeah, I just paid $15 to, um, you know, the guy that photographed for me last week and I gave him cash, which I don't usually do, but, or I, you know, paid him through Venmo. I'll add it in here as a way for me to do a checks and balance. That's a good point. And so, um, there's a lot of different ways you do it. The key is to just make sure that you, um, account for your stuff. You make sure you enter it and then you reconcile it, which I don't like to use the word reconcile, just like I don't like to use the word budget because non-numbers people freak out when they hear those words. Mm -hmm. So when Brooks is talking about making, you know, you reconcile every month, you just review it. You make sure that, oh, I spent $500. Oh, let me see, one, two, I, but I only have $400 interest. Oh, that's right, I went to Goodwill last week, I forgot to enter it. That's all reconciliation is, just reviewing it and checking it off to make sure that you entered everything that you need to enter. Right, yeah. Very Sorry, quickly. Mike. My background's accounting, so if I'm using uh, accounting terms. I yeah, no, and you're, and you're right to use the accounting terms, but I just want people to, that aren't numbers people that freak out. I mean, I supervised accounting people, uh, no, I supervised non-accounting people for 30 years in my career, and I just learned when I would ask a musician for a budget, I didn't ask him for a budget. I would say, give me a list of your expenses, right. your projected expenses. They didn't have any problem with that, but when I said, give me a budget, people freak out. Oh, I don't know how to do a budget. So it's just, you know, trying to, trying to get everybody to understand what we're doing here. And it's not difficult, even if you're not a numbers person. Yep. And you mentioned there, something pretty interesting. So you, some people want to know their net profit per item. Now I was on a demo this week and a user said, this is exactly how I do it. So as he lists the next day he comes into data mine every day because he lists every day and enters his cost of goods. So what he does was he goes into data mine and he sorts by start date and sorts by descending. And this will pull in your last listed items. So our last listed items, remember it sinks every 24 hours. So this is as of yesterday, we listed these items right here. Then what he does is goes into inventory, cost of goods, and then the report will pull exactly like that. And remember all the ones in yellow have not been entered yet. So he would go into edit mode and then he would enter, you know, this could be 500, this could be 10, two, and then clicks update. So that way you're not, you know, you're, as you're listing, you're updating your cost of goods at the same exact time. That's a really fast way of sorting it by start date and doing it that way. Yes, that's, that is the way that, when I first started using data mine, I was entering cost of goods after items sold. And now when I'm listing my items, I put my uh, cost of goods in my um, custom SKU. And then when I realized that I had to do some editing and uh, the, my cu custom numbers made be cut, having put my cost of goods in those custom SKUs, I couldn't bulk at it. Mm -hmm. So then now I put them in there, then I go back and do exactly what you did there with data mine. And then I ch um, take the cost of goods out of my custom SKU. Yep. Um, so that takes care of most of the accounting that I think. I'm going to go over what I think sometimes is the most important piece for any eBay business is the, just the business side of things where it goes to your goals and how your goals are tracking to what you're seeing on online sales. So on the first of every month, I spend at least one hour on that day on a huge whiteboard coming out with my goals, whether it's revenue from online revenue from consulting, revenue from whatever sources that it's coming from. And, and then some of those goals, revenue offline, is kind of backloaded off listing. So if you list more, you sell more. So you need to put a goal to that. 
And then on a monthly basis, I think it's very important to review your dashboard area. So you would go to your report home, and this is where you would report on, I'm just gonna open to a few new tabs here. So a lot of data is on this chart right here. You have your revenue by store. You have your listings, number of orders for the last three months. You have your sales through rates, so that could be a goal. You could have your average sales price as a goal as well. So there's a few ways to increase your revenue. You increase your average sales price or you increase your active listing count out there. Um, so just keep in mind that this kind of stuff right here, you want to track back to a goal. And the number, the, the details are in the numbers. I'll give you a great example. Last June of uh, June 16th last year, we lost a massive server contract and all those servers went on to shop my data center account. You can see what happened to our eBay store. Our average sales price completely dipped for almost 200 bucks all the way down to $36, $24. And then Ouch. lately, we have been working like crazy getting more contracts and you can see our average sales price now is going up and even higher than it was back then. But you can see in the data, it definitely represents, and this is stuff, I think what, even I've seen this, when things aren't going right in business, I don't wanna look at the numbers. And that's just not, that's the last thing you wanna do in business. <laughs> yes. You know, you're afraid to know the numbers, but you got to get in there. Um, and you can see how it correlated with actually revenue for us. You know, revenue was going over almost 40 grand back in June. And we lost that thing and then just these things sliding and now it's starting to go back up but it's really important to, to review this stuff on a monthly basis I think yep okay and then and also your sales through right you might make a change in saying I'm gonna completely switch to a different buying source is my sales through rate going up well how do you know that um, and then this is where you can be reviewing that so it's pretty simple stuff, but I think the, the, the hardest part is the routine. Um, you know, yes. getting out there on the whiteboard or Excel. I, I'm more of a, I have whiteboards that are like five by five feet in every place. I have multiple offices and they face me every single day. So I'm forced to look at my goals every single day. Yep, that's the way to do it. So that's just my, my best advice. Do you have anything to add to that, Teresa? No, to be honest with you, I don't, I, I, this is an area that I need to, um, up my game in, I guess I could say. Um, I know my numbers kind of, I mean, I certainly don't know the detail like this, but I don't have the volume like you have where I'm, you know, losing 20 K a month, but right. you know, it still doesn't matter. I mean, we do it on Amazon. Amazon has a little graph on there and it tells you what you did versus last year, last, last month, and last year. So it's the same kind of thing. I just need to get in the habit of looking here. Right. Um, but yeah, you, I mean, you just need to see it and it's good when you see the little bars grow. Yep. If you're not a numbers person. That's what you want. You want those bars to be as, as tall as you can get them. Yep. And I think the, it's to me, it might sound so simple the the whiteboard idea, but the having the data here, once you go to do something else, you can almost forget about it, but physically having to write yes. on the whiteboard every month, <laughs> right in front of you, it really that that routine just just grows and and then it yeah it reminds me what it, well if i've got you know 30 minutes today well what can i do to get to that to help me reach those goals right and what i do every monday i review where i'm at month to day yeah it only takes me 30 minutes to do it yep yeah i would hate to sometimes get to the third week of the month and i'm 25 percent of my goal yeah you know <laughs> and sometimes that happens when you get really busy Yep. But this is to me the best advice that I can probably give. Um, and how do you use data mine? So, all right, let's go on to the next one here. So average sales price we talked about. Um, loyal customers can be great if you sell business to business, what I've seen. So what I would suggest every month getting into data mine and looking at who's buying what and how often they're buying. Um, yeah, I think you have a, I think you have a unique situation there, and I'm not saying that other uh, eBay sellers or data mine users can't benefit from that, but um, you've definitely that's something that you built because of the type of business that you have. Right. I use it. I find it fascinating, uh, just because I was one that said for years and years and years I didn't have repeat customers, and data mine shows me that oh, oops, yes you do. I don't have. I mean, I have a handful. I think. 
I probably have a little over maybe 15 months worth of data and I might have 15, well, less than 20 repeat customers, but that's 20 more than I thought I had a year ago. Right. That's true. But it definitely if you're, but some people will say, I want to get into more of a niche market yeah. like that. And I think it's, I'll give you a great example that just happened in the past seven days. I was reviewing my analytics and have you ever heard of the company called Fuji Film? The yes. green cameras that are, okay, Fuji Film is located in my hometown, their headquarters plant. Fuji Film IT department bought from me seven days ago a $12 power supply. And I contacted them this week that went straight to the guy's cell phone, the IT director. And he's like, oh yeah, you know, then I started asking questions about what do they do with all their old equipment? Long story short, we're going to be heading up to the Raleigh area, hopefully in the next 30 days to have a meeting with them on their entire plant. So this is like a awesome 20,000 employee company that started off an eBay sale that was $12. $12. Amazing. I paid for shipping. So it's like a $6 profit. So, um, it's just but interesting when you get into that kind of space, it really can benefit, uh, yep. benefit you $6 profit, but the contact is priceless. It's called lifetime value of the customer. That's all I care about. I don't care. I, sometimes I do deals to lose money. Yep. You know, or credit card points. Yeah. So that gets into the weekly stuff. So weekly, I do review that right there. You know, typically on the, um, weekends, it only takes me about 15 minutes to open my orders page in a new tab. And I just open up all of the transactions that are bold, which signifies a business buying from me. So, and then I also, my eyes gravitate to the number next to the transaction, which represents a repeat buyer. Gotcha. And that's what my eyes gravitate to really quickly. Literally takes 10 minutes once a week. And, you know, I've gotten all of my big contracts by doing something like that. Awesome. Well, Good tip for those that want to get in a niche. Yep. And then this is kind of redundant, but on a weekly basis, I also go back over my dashboard area as well. So um, any questions on the weekly stuff you think, Teresa? No, I think it's pretty, um, I think that for you uh, or for, you know, somebody that wants to really dive into that, that's, it's a very good weekly benchmark. Right. So I'm going to add one. I'm just going to add one wholesale. I've been working so hard on this. <laughs> it wow. hasn't gotten the traction that I wanted to get. But the wholesale stuff for data mine is constantly evolving. Uh, you might have saw this week we did a big tactical gear that sold out within like two minutes on YouTube. That's um, awesome. So that was a proof of concept. Concept. This cut me right here makes all the authorized military gear for the armed forces. Um, luckily, I, I'm in the military, so I have good connections there, and they have 30 pallets of excess stock um, that I'm hopefully going to get my hands on to help our users get out there, because that stuff has really high sell through. Um, so more to come on that, but on a weekly basis, I would just see if there's new wholesale stuff out there, just so if you get tired and you don't want to have to drive to thrift, you can easily just thrift online, and it just gets sent to your house within 24 hours of being, you know, placing the order. Yep. Works great. All right. Daily. So we've already kind of talked about cost of goods. So this is for the someone that wants to, on a daily basis, go back into your, what you listed yesterday. You would go ahead and enter your cost of goods for that. The next thing, I actually had this as a monthly thing, but then a lot of our users came back and said mileage tracking is a daily thing, which yeah. kind of shocked me. But um, so is that what you do, Teresa? Yeah, and my daily isn't really daily. I don't do things, but it's definitely with uh, less than weekly. Um, yeah. And then um, I think you know this. I go back through when I'm reconciling my credit card statements, and if I see that I, you know, made uh, purchases at you know three Rosses, I track my mileage and data mine. Even if my um, purchases aren't, I'm not selling them on eBay, uh, and so. It's just, it's just an easy way to track the mileage. And so I really like that ability to go back and add it in. Yep. And for everyone, I'm just going to go to the screen right here. So, you know, in data mining, you can, what I always suggest people, you know, most online sellers go to 10, 15 different places on a routine basis. So I would always suggest just going into your address book as a new user and entering all of the locations that you go. And then on a daily base or, you know, when you travel, go to your logs. 
and just start saying that I went here, I drove to this place to the flea market, I went back to my house, the travel purpose was sourcing, and then you just click slate and say, that will log that trip. If it's a routine trip, you don't have to do that. You can just click travel again and click save, and that will automatically book that travel. Yeah, I um, I do the travel again the most because I do go to the post office almost daily. Yep. Um, and so uh, I don't go daily, and if I miss a week, then I have to, I have to go back to my eBay sales to see. Oh, I sold that on Monday, and I didn't, and I didn't because I have same day um, delivery on my items. Mm -hmm. So if something sells on Monday before two o'clock, I need to go to that post office that day. So it's a it's a great. Uh, check and balance. So I can check it against my eBay sales. I can use the, the uh, mileage to check it against my credit card receipts. Like it's just a great way to, um, to be able to track that actual mileage. I'm actually going back in for my 2017 um, receipts just to see how far off I was on my mileage tracking mm -hmm. using this. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm just, I'm going to do my eBay sales to the right. post office. And then my and then uh, sourcing based on credit card receipts because almost everything I buy I put on a credit card, so right. I think it's a pretty good thing. So I want to see what what I what mileage I used for my actual taxes and how far off I was. Gotcha. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> <laughs> that just lets you know that I would think most people heavily underestimate. That. I agree. It's and, it's gonna it's going to tell me the value of this. Tool. in data mine right. and will consciously or subconsciously cause me to be uh, more um, to input the stuff more regularly right. because I will know that if I don't do it regularly then I'm gonna lose all kinds of money so for me it's just an exercise to prove a point in my mind makes sense so now let's go over inventory management so how would you how do you do that on a daily basis what's your rule of thumb when do you do it? So my rule of thumb is I, I don't want to have anything over 180 days. Now, some people say 90 days. Um, and frankly, I think for me, because my average sale, because of data mine, I know that my average sale um, is 62 days. And so um, I uh, was doing everything that was over 180 days. And... Um, uh, so I was just going in every day and, you know, uh, making sure that anything that hit over the over 180 days, I put in the basket to, to delist and sell similar. Right. And then I would count, it was kind of fun for me cause I, I was backed up for a while mm -hmm. and then I would calculate out at, you know, 25 a day by, you know, April 5th, I will have them all done. And then, you know, in the next week, 25 more hit the basket and I'd be like, okay, now it's April 6th. And so it was just, Pretty soon it got to the point where I had zero, like you, zero over 180 days. Yep. And now I just, I just kind of watch the 91 to 180 days. Right now I'm pretty even. I've got about, uh, well, I've got about 800 listings in the zero to 30, 1600 in the 31 to 60, and then about 800 in the other two. Gotcha. Um, and so that, that was kind of, uh, you know, that was an obvious number thing that popped out on me that it seems to be pretty um, level pretty even split yeah I think it's important these charts change every day things yes. are sliding every day so what's in the one 91 to 1 a is going to be much different tomorrow especially as you delist and relist it's going to start coming in chunks of 25 exactly it's not going to be onesie twosies like you're doing it manually so it's important to watch this daily and as those chunks start sliding into the next uh, bucket then just do, get, get into a habit of doing those yeah, and when I was trying to clear out the over 180, I stopped because um, I my sales had dropped down, and I realized that two thirds of my listings were less than 60 days old. So based on my rule of nothing sells for it takes 62 days to sell, I was like, no wonder my listings are all too new. So again, that's where you take data and you go, okay, I'm going to change my behavior. I'm not going to and items because I was going to start on and doing the 91 to 180s next and I, I just put the brakes on that and I just I just keep track of it and then I, I do look at the 91 to 180s and I'm like well if I feel like you know adding some things like I did this a couple of days ago because I knew I was going to be listing on Thursday 
And so I just put 25 in the bin, even though they weren't 180, because I want to have consistent sales. So, um, so, you know, it's just knowledge is power. Information is power. And so when you start looking at this and you, you know, you realize, oh, my sales are down. Oh, two thirds of my sales are under 60 days. Okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to change my behavior. Then you can start really uh, making business decisions based on real information and not just a gut feeling. I like it. Yeah, I think I'm changing. Mine was a 61 day mark, but I think I'm going to change it to um, just like yours. And I'm probably going to stop delisting things that have, since we sell multiples, um, I do think eBay really puts a lot of power in when it says this SKU has sold 25 times. They do, but that doesn't show up on your listing because your listing comes up numbers of days since something sold. I, I wish you a real time example. I just so or this is like real life that I've been working on today that was making me kind of change that just a little bit. Just to get the feedback on this. So this product here has sold 67 times. This is yes. one of my competitors that actually, this is probably my hard drive from like a year ago. Okay. Even though my, there they are again. And my price point is $69.99. Yep. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm the lowest out of everybody. I should be selling it. So I'm just working through all this stuff real time to figure out what the heck's going on. Well, you can see that somebody that has a uh, sales history uh, definitely gets a higher search ranking. So exactly. I, I asked them, somebody at eBay specifically for my Size Me Up tool. Mm -hmm. My Size Me Up tool is the oldest listing in my store, and it was listed in November of 2017, but I have over 100 sales. And so I said, so I, I messaged somebody, I said, okay, I'm going to pull a I know somebody card yep. and ask you this very specific question, like what should I do? Should I end this and relist it? And basically he said, because it has so many sales, leave it. And so that's what I like about um, Datamine is that this listing is not, it's the number of days since the last sale, not the number of days that it's been listed. Right. Which is two very different numbers because my oldest listing again is from November of 2017. But because I consistently sell things, it never shows up on your report. Right. That's a good point. And it also shows you in the active listing count how many sold. So yes. like this active, this listing right here, I probably should never delist and relist because I've sold 76 of them. Right. So and it won't, it won't come up on your, as long as you can sell one every 30 days or something, and it won't, I mean, it definitely won't show up on your, um, Report. your, your listing to, to delist and relist, be, you know, if you keep it up over 180 days. Right. That's a good point. So one of the things I like about that is that, that there is some thought into what shows up on the list so I don't have to think about it. Right. All right. That's thanks to Wuchung. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Gotta I didn't think about all these little nuggets until after I started like using it. Um, all right. So now let's go on to on demand. And so I use it for customer support returns. So customer can come back to me six months from now and they can say, I did this transaction. Do you have more? Or they're trying to, you know, do a return. That stuff's purged on eBay but you can go into you know, your orders page in the data mine and it tracks it forever. So you can see all the history, just not the first transaction, but all of them associated with that customer because sometimes that happens and this customer has purchased from us like 20 times. So I might change the, my tone when I talk. Yes, yes. You know, it's, it's I might not write them an email. I might call them personally. And this yeah. happens quite frequently for us. So that's uh, one way. And then you were talking about statistics on how new eBay releases or a new government things happen, which you can get data from. So if you want to talk about that. Yeah. So I, I use the on demand. Um, I do data mine on demand probably more than anything else. And it's like, I have a question in my mind and I need an answer and I immediately go to data mine to see if I can figure it out. For instance, um, last week I got in the mail, something from the mail, the post office, that said, Jane Doe, there was a package that I owed $1.87 in postage from Jane Doe. And I'm like, I'm not supposed to be paying for postage. This is supposed to just come out and it's supposed to be a wash. And so I wanted to know, is this an Amazon order? Is this an eBay order? And I typed in Jane Doe in my sold listings and I couldn't get anything. And because I'm on managed payment, I don't get that, uh, 
uh, PayPal email that I used to be able to find it on. I couldn't find it on my managed payment thing, so I came to data, data mine, and I couldn't, I think we talked about this, but I couldn't search for it um, based on their name in data mine, but there was something, I didn't have any other information. And so, you know, this is what I love about data mine. I send them an email and I said, hey, this is my situation. Um, I think this is uh, less than 90 days old, which you have to purge the customer information in 90 days, correct? Yeah, we have certain eBay things we have to follow. Yeah, and so that, that's an eBay rule. And right. so, um, but I would like, I wanted to be able to, like, here's a great example for somebody to be able to use data mine. I want to be able to type in Jane Doe and you pull up the order for me. And um, I ended up having to pay the $2 and find out what it was. And it was an eBay order. And um, I just didn't have enough information to figure out what it was. Um, but, you know, that, so that was an on-demand thing uh, that, you know, has happened once. Um, but I do it for lots of other different things just to figure out my, you know, uh, some, some statistics for my business. Yeah. And one thing that came to mind quickly for me was sales tax. Are you in a state that's potentially going to become uh, part of that? And then you can quickly go into data mine and see how this, you know, how this affects you, or there's going to be a price increase on USPS and you're located on the East coast and you spent 95% of your stuff to the West coast and all those things you can really get an understanding of, do I need to increase my prices? Do you have that on your open, your um, sales tax? So I think this is a great feature in, in data mine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It is uh, sales report by state. So I love this feature because I love that everybody's, so he's in South Carolina. So his, is, his state information is on the very top and, um, and he, so and it, I love this report because it shows that 28% uh, of his sales go to California. Less than 1% less than goes to in-state, which is good for him for having to do sales tax. Right. And then you know, New York, go down, what, uh, oh, do you, where do, how much do you ship to Washington? Because Washington is a state that eBay collects the sales tax for. Um, Virginia it may not show up there because it's going to be a zero. Two percent. And that was, is that from December? Is that from, yeah, see, January. It's year to date. Okay. Well, it's year to date. So we've done 571. We've done. Yeah, we'll eBay is supposed to collect that sales tax and remit it for you. There's, I think there's five states now. Oh, you know, what? I, I saw an order going to Washington had sales tax on. Yes. eBay automatically does that. And I thought our lister made a problem. I thought they listed it wrong. Nope. Oh, so there you go then. There is, I forget the, I forget the five states, but I, I remember Washington because it was one of the first ones. Yep. And this um, happened this week. I was really wondering why we charge sales tax on Washington. You didn't. eBay did. <laughs> okay. There we go. So, yeah. So, I mean, and, and this, this whole thing of the percentages on the side, that was my idea because I, I like to talk in percentages. I want to know, now he knows that 28, almost 29% of his sales go to California. That's the other side of the country for him. For me, it's, I forget what the percentage is on mine, but I, you know, my sales go to the East Coast. And I have a theory about that that I'm trying to test out and figure out, but I can't. I was working on something with someone at eBay and he's not there anymore, so. Um, got to start it over. So All right. do you want, you want me to share my screen now? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pass. Teresa wants to show something specifically how she uses her inventory that's a lot different view look than mine just because of how she manages it. So let me go and to- my, st my store categories are gonna be more like a lot of people. Let me just right. share my screen. Yeah, I think I, need, I think I need to make you- um... Oh, stop. If you stop sharing your screen, um, and then I can share mine. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, sorry. My internet's like super slow here at the hotel. That's all right. Make host. And then you can do whatever. Do you want to change? Yes. Okay. So now you should be able to. Am I the host? No. Yes. 
Uh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah. Screen. What? Sure. Okay. Can you see my data mine stuff? Yep. Okay. So this is the stuff that I use. And mine's all, I use this inventory summary tab all the time. And mm -hmm. I'm going to go just go down the list over here and each one and what I use it for. This is the basic thing that like, like uh, Brooks was using. Um, you know, you can see that I have zero listings over 181 days. That's by design. Um, 872, 1,605, eight, this is where, you know, right around 800 in every block, which is a good place. I like that place. Um, eventually, I'll get this down so it's not 1,600, but that'll take time. So then, um, multi-quantity listings. This is something that I asked Wu Chun to do because... When eBay came out with the new uh, volume pricing uh, product, you know, everybody's like, oh, that's not going to work for me because I have, you know, one-ups. I'm like, well, most of my items are one-ups as well, but I do have multi-quantity and I wanted to know. So uh, Wu Chun works his magic and I could easily see um, that, you know, basically 70, 73% or, you know, two or three quarters of my listings are single quantity. But um, I do have 25%. Uh, so I really paid attention to this whole volume pricing discount stuff. And I did the work and I put all these listings in, in volume pricing quant or, yeah, volume pricing discounts to where if you buy two or more, you get 5%, three or more, you get 10%, and four or more, or whatever it is, I did 5, 10, and 15. And I can't tell you how many old listings in quantities of five or 20 I got rid of. Um, when that first happened. And so, so I really like that. And so this is, this is what you should be looking at this for, just to kind of see what your numbers are. This one is something that uh, um, business policies frustrate me. Like these copies here, like I can easily see I need to go fix this listing. I need to go fix this listing. And what's great about here is I can go um, click on it. Now, this is, every, most people know that I have two locations. So everything is, if you ship, if I'm shipping from my Gilbert location, it's same day. If I'm shipping from my Williams location, it's one day. And I had to actually create those two policies so I could split my inventory, my Williams and, and Gilbert inventory. Um, so um, if I click on here, this is what I love about data mine. It's like this one. I'm like, why is this item uh, in the wrong you know, what, what, why did um, eBay create a business policy? And I can just click this and change it to what I need to do. And I can go down here to, it was a copy. Um, oh, see, it doesn't, oh, Gilbert. So I can go to Gilbert B, and I, I labeled these Gilbert on purpose, Gilbert A, B, and C, because I wanted to be able to sort them. And then update, and now it's not in that, um, you just fixed it. Yeah, I just fixed it. And I, you know, I have no idea why it creates copies. I, I do kind of have an idea. Actually, Katie explained it to me one time, but it frustrates me, so I ignore it. This is a, um, this I love, love, love this report. And um, this is the one where I specifically said to Brooks, we need to look at my account because my account's gonna show it better than yours, your account. So these are my store categories. And then, you know, I have an American girl. And then these are my subcategories. And so I can look at these and see, you know, these are still pretty good cat subcategories because I have enough information, enough variety in them. But what I want to do is, you know, I have two items in automotive. Do I want a category for just two items? I don't know. Um, I should probably take this book's other and move it to a different category, maybe not um, uh, separate it out. Like I've probably sold everything else out of my book's other. Christmas crafts, like this is just a way to manage and condense my store categories or change things around. Maybe I take this one sweatshirt and take everything that has less than five and move it to a clearance category. That's one thing that I was thinking about. Um, but I also like that, uh, you know, I know I have 152 American Girl items, 146 Beanie Babies, 602 Christmas items. That's that represents 15% of my inventory. Um, come down to you know clothing. I hate clothing, but there it is. Come down to Halloween. You know, actually, I thought Halloween would be more. Halloween is only 7% of my inventory. 
Um, yeah. So I, I just, you know, I just look at this to kind of see what I'm doing and, and where I'm at. And, you know, I want to kind of condense some stuff so I'm not buying stuff um, like I used to. Um, and it's just a good way to quickly see that, you know, I probably need to redo some of my red kitchen stuff and, and just make the categories more appropriate. Um, the other thing too that I use this for is I was very seriously considering deleting a ton of inventory items and going down from an anchor store to a premium store. And so I thought, how many ties, um, ties was an area, so men's ties. I have 356 ties, that was an area, let me just get rid of ties, they're not, I don't really sell them. Coffee mugs was another one, I have 62 of those. Um, DVDs and VHS, where's my DVDs? DVDs, 237, and I started thinking, wow, I could get rid of a thousand items very easily. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know, I just sold the DVD today, but ties, I started selling, you know, I'm like, okay, I do sell ties. I sold probably four mugs that week. So, it, you know, and if I got rid of a thousand listings, I would still be paying the same amount I am for an anchor store. So I just decided to hold off on that, doing that. But again, I was able to figure it out because I had the information by looking at these um, reports, these summaries that Wu Chun has done. So I, um, product condition. So I forget what prompted me to want to know uh, what my percentage of new versus used was. Oh, I know eBay came out with the statistics of, I forget what it is now, 83% of the stuff yeah. on site is new. So I was like, okay, so I know I sell a lot of new stuff. So, you know, I, I message Wu Chun and I think it's a very simple thing. Hey, can you add up my listings and tell me how many are, you know, what percentage are new, what percentage are used? And he's like, well, okay, it's not that simple because we have good, like new, pre-owned, you. I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. There's all these different things. So he pulled out all the different types of conditions and then he assigned them whether they would be considered a new or a used. And we just talked about this today that we're going, he's going to change this to where um, he's going to make them um, color coded. So if he included good in my used count, he's going to make that, let's just say red. And if he included used in my used count, he's going to make that green or whatever it might be. Um, but here's, here, this was an eye opener. I am about 55, 45 new versus used. So I now know for a business, making a business decision, I would have, if somebody would have asked me, I would have said I'm 75% new and 25% used if I guessed. And now I don't have to guess, I know. And so then, then I want to know, do I sell more used stuff? Do I sell more new stuff? Like, where do I want to focus my attention in the future? So, um, so that's why this is, you know, people, like, people might look at this and go, who cares? Well, that's why um, I think it's important. This one, you know, oh wait, let me go over here. Bless Wu Chun for doing this because I think this is something that, I actually found one seller that, um, I think it was on a Facebook group where I commented, they want this information. I've been asking eBay for this information for years. And why do I wanna know how much um, my items, it's, it's, it's not weight by, it is weight by entry. So I asked Wu Chun, here's my issue. I have over 4,000 listings. Not every one of them has weight entered. Um, you know, just from early old listings, whatever it might be. When I had, um, so that's one issue. As you can see, I have 17, 43% of my listings don't have any weight. That's a problem for me. Um, if I want, when postage, uh, rates increase. Um, the other problem is that I know that of these 53% that do have weight, not all of them are correct. Because uh, when I had, when I was listing on mobile and doing a sell similar, it wasn't evident to me, I have a ton of listings that show as one pound. And I don't know how even, you know, I know that some of them are three pounds, some of them are four ounces. So um, I wanted a way to be able to go and check this. So um, this just tells me that this tells me it needs work. So then what I love here is if I click on this weight, um, not available, is it working? Yeah, it's working. There's the little blue line that tells you it's working. Then, um, okay. So this is, this is not available. So now if I click up here that says, so this is, 
excluding listings with the weight. So let me add the listings with the weight back in so you can see what, where it um, shows up. So here it is, this, this one's listed at nine ounces and nine ounces and eight ounces, that's all great. So why do I want this? Because when I go to Williams and do a physical inventory, I'm going to actually weigh every item and enter it into the spreadsheet. So for me, that includes putting a W in here and sorting by custom label, ascending and So now, so this is popped up here because I have it in Williams and in Gilbert. So let me go down here. Uh, let me go over here. Okay. So this now sorts A, B, C, D. So this is Williams shelf or uh, unit C shelf four in the summer bin. No weight. So when I go to Williams, I need to weigh this. I need to weigh this. I need to check if this is four ounces. See how it's there? And so, but here's the other thing. This is another reason to love Wu Uchun. My inventory in Williams is stored in a big metal building where I get zero internet reception. So I have to actually print this out. So again, I reached out to, this is, I mean, this is why you work with smaller companies because you ask for something really obscure and you get it. So if you click on inventory or catalog view, this will print, and if you see it, there's the item number, um, William C4, and okay, here it is, four ounces. So when I print this, it'll print out on eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper, and I can, I ha it was a very important for me to have the um, picture, because while I might know what a dolphin swim ring 40 inch is, my minions up there may not know that that's what this is. And we're... We've become a visual society. Nobody's going to read this. We're going to say, okay, look, I have uh, six of those. They're on D2, and they weigh three pounds. And I'm going to check it off. Or I'm going to put the correct weight in or whatever it is. And um, that was huge. I think this, this took Wu Chun a lot of time. So I want people to use it because I think it's really, really helpful. People that have um, their inventory stored in a... Uh, storage facility or off-site or anywhere where you don't have access to internet yeah. um, use this catalog view that's what it was for and also I'm going to export it to a an Excel spreadsheet um, so that I can enter the data right there on the spreadsheet and then I'm going to use that to have probably a VA upload the um, correct information to each listing so that is, I believe, the four, yep, the four different things that I use. I probably use these, these things more than anything else. Um, this and mileage more than anything else in a data mine. Very cool. And that is way different than how we use it. But I will tell you this, like, uh, it is so, my wife is so good about this. When she does a listing, she weighs it. She figures out the box already needs to be shipped in it. So when we go to ship something, it's bulk editor, one click, and everything just prints out. So doing your work on the upfront, you know, we, her capacity is probably shipping 150 items a day at max. And that's IT products where you really have to be careful with them. But the only reason why she can do that is because the upfront work that she does, and she's so diligent about it, I'm the exact opposite. But I force myself to, you know, that's just the way it needs to be done. Um, yeah. And I don't package, I don't pre-package it. I weigh the item for exactly what the item weighs. And then um, if I, are you there? I'm here. Oh, um, if I see that the item weighs two ounces and it's going international, I'll use two ounces. Yep. But if the item weighs two ounces, you know, and then I put it in the envelope, it's going to weigh two ounces. But I always um, print the postage out to four ounces. So for those of you that don't know, and this may change with the, with the rate increases, but as of May of 2019, if, if you're shipping something first class mail, one to four ounces is the same price. Five to eight ounces is the same price. So if you have something that's six ounces, I just put it at, that it weighs eight ounces, and then I'm not going to get any to any issues with my scale doesn't match the postal, post office. Um, nine to 12 and 13 to 16. And so my, my shit stuff always weighs at four ounces, eight ounces, 12 ounces, and 16 ounces. Love so it. that's just, I mean, 
I don't want to take the time to package it up and box it up and, you know, figure it all out while I list it, with the exception of fabric. Fabric, I actually put in the envelope and put a sticker on the outside with the fabric number and it's in a box. I pull it out and I actually slap the label on it and that's it. And I actually don't like doing that because sometimes I want to slip in a card. I put cards in for new buyers mm -hmm. and I've already sealed it up. Right. So, but you know, it is what it is. All right. I think that concludes on the part on how to. Now, the next thing I want to talk about really quickly is what's coming down the pipeline. This is something that I think eBay is really doing a lot on promoting promoted listings, which is Absolutely. great. I mean, every time we went to the one in Miami, that's all they talked about. We're going to go to the one in LA next week, the mini meetup. But what does that mean for us? And I want to get an itemized way of how we are paying eBay. Because right now it's kind of a lump sum and there's so many different feed factors in there. Um, so let me share my screen real quick. And I want to kind of, I'll have Teresa kind of go over a little bit of the data as well. But Yeah, so this is something that I... Um have asked and worked with uh, data mine on. Um, most of you know that I am a big uh, believer in downloading your invoices. I download them into a CSV file, into Excel, and I'm a uh, very uh, fluent Excel user, so it doesn't, it's just click, 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 and I can do it in a few minutes. But for those of you that aren't, and this is kind of why I wanted this, is I wanted somebody that was already a perk for for data mine users that aren't Excel users. So this is kind of the report. I don't know what you guys are calling this. Uh, invoice summary report. Let's just call it that for now. Right. But so um, I, so they pulled this down from uh, just one of their test dummy accounts. And so I'm looking at this and immediately you can see that um, for this account, it's, you know, uh, in November, 55 sales, uh, ad fee is promoted listings. Yeah. And you this can is, see the, num the this number. This is our account here. So this, okay. this is our account here you're looking at. Okay, so the number of listings and the um, and the, the number of sales and how much they paid in the ad fees. Um, bold listing fee. So this is what I'm always telling people to look at. So um, in November, they paid a one bold listing fee, two bold listing fee. Looks like they ca probably caught it because nobody needs to pay for bold listing fees. It doesn't work. Yeah. Um, chargebacks and refunds. Um, no money back guarantee. I don't know what this, what this would be, the two. Final value fee. So this is, you, you know, 157 items sold each month and how much you paid in your final value fees um, on shipping. So one of your items had shipping that you paid um, final value fee on. Mm -hmm. Item subtitle fee. Again, this is in the same month that you did bold listing. I'm guessing this was probably a mistake. Yes. And it was fixed. Yes. Uh-oh. Oh, look at this, 33 for the month of April. This is probably not a, um, this is an error. Um, yeah. And then, you, so, so you, you can see just by going down here, return shipping. So there was one in here that I really, yeah, return shipping. So this is how much it costs you to have your items returned. Um, not a, I, didn't I, even know, I didn't even know they charged you for that, but they do. Yeah, so if you have free shipping and free returns, you had four returns, it cost you $23. So, um, you know, this is about $5 an item, this is about $6 an item, and so on, this is $4. So you can kind of know when you relist your item, you can increase it by that much. So this is another thing, um, the subscription fee is, uh, you're not paying your annual, you're paying it by monthly instead of annual, and I can actually tell you why that's happening, and we can talk about that. Um, and then your discounts, and then, uh, other we'd have to ask I think you'd have to drill down to find out what the other is because I don't know that could be a hundred different things and so this is how much you paid your eBay fees on this account right so this right here is huge for sellers you can take that um, downloaded report and he summarizes it really easy here I love that it's month over month over month I probably will ask him to do some percentages over here. I don't know what, but I like to see percentages. Yeah, I talked um, to him today about summing up your gross revenue and then seeing what the percent was. So we think, perfect. if you ask me right now, I think my eBay fees are 
I guarantee you, if I do that, my eBay fees are going to be much higher. <laughs> yeah. Well, because your because your final value fees are nine percent. Right. So if you but then what are you so so your fees are going to be nine percent because of your category, but what you might want to what we might want to figure out is what your total. Um, this is your total payment to eBay isn't going to be 9%. It's going to be something more like 15% because right. it's going to include your ad fees and your listing fees and all this other stuff. So that's the number I want to know. So you're right. We need to take the gross number and then figure out what percentage all of these are um, based on that information. Yep. So I'm excited for this to roll out. Love it. So that's what's coming. Um, the next kind of big thing is to be able to drill down into all the transactions associated. So we're not going to have that in our first out, but imagine clicking on this uh, other and 555 bucks. What made that up? You know, that looks like a credit back. So that's great. I want to get those every month. But how do you know what that is? And, and then the stuff after that, so that's coming. I really want to drill down into promoted listings and understand uh, our sales through rate by promotion. So is your sales through rate at 1% the same thing it is at 5%? If so, that extra 4% could be used to actually say it's worth paying data mine subscription fee, right? Only 40 bucks. We don't do percentages. That's just, as you scale, you keep growing more profit. Um, so I think that is huge because eBay is really pushing it, which I do think it affects your sales and they are marketing it. But how does that help us as a seller and protect us? I think that's important. But I agree. that's a little sneak peek into the uh, and what's going on. So more to come, you know, in the future. Awesome. Looking forward to it all. But uh, so everyone that pretty much concludes on what's going on. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time. Teresa, I really appreciate, you know, you hopping on because you have such a different, you sell so many different things, you know, 90% of our stuff is you. So, so many things that you said that I, I could benefit from now. So really appreciate that and hope our users love this video. And with that said, have a good rest of your day. All right. Thanks everyone. Awesome.